This conference will now be recorded. So, uh, you all came to this session, like for the FPGA session. So, first, I want to understand from you guys what you know about FPGA. So, according to you, what is FPGA? You might have studied about the CPU, GPUs, and like so many accelerators, uh, ASICs. But according to you, what exactly FPGA is? What is your understanding about FPGA? It's a reconfigurable, yes, sir. sir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a combination of uh, logic grids which uh, performs a specific task something. Okay. Any other answer? Okay. So, which can uh, be used to test or design uh, before uh, manufacturing or fabricating an ice cream. Okay. It, it, uh, you mean to say that like we use this FPGA for the prototyping applications, right? Uh, before yes. uh, actually implement it on AC. Yeah, that is right. So, the field programmable gate array, that FPGA, what we say, actually the name itself indicates uh, it's a, see, actually there are, uh, four different terms right gate arrays and which is like programmable in the field so it is nothing but like in the uh, childhood you might have played a uh, maze game right where uh, a legos games actually where you used to uh, build uh, different shapes or different uh, toy using a group of small uh, puzzles right so fpg you can think of in that way where we have a different gates, different memories, and different uh, set of uh, flip flops. Uh, everything as given as a package. I mean, it's like all small, small blocks, small. Uh, I mean, LUTs or like uh, 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 logical gates, like as a small, small components available in inside a small chip. Okay, nothing is connected. I mean, everything is something like small, small blocks using HDL or I mean VHDL or Verilog where you can connect these blocks together and create a circuitry what you want okay that's where the term field programmable okay in the field I mean when you want to create any circuitry in the field you will be programming through Verilog or VHDL and making the required circuitry okay so, uh, for instance, uh, we will assume that you want to uh, build a small uh, uh, communication model, maybe like BPSK communication module. Okay. So, you can write a very low code. You might have simulated and tested. I mean, uh, what you had done uh, so far, like in the uh, uh, in your BTEC courses and all, you might have studied about VSDL and very low. At the max, you might have done like uh, uh simulation using some simulation xilinx simulator or uh, model sim simulator but those codes we can generate a netlist and map into this fpga where that entire ic will act like a bpsk model or later point of time uh, if you want to build a processor itself like uh, 80 8085 processor itself so if you write a very low equivalent very low code for it and fuse into fpga then that FPGA will act like a 8085 processor itself. So you can configure that particular IC as per your requirement. Okay. So which actually like uh, the very low code what you program that acts like a connection of these gates. Also like see when I say logical gates, we have various different types of gates, right? I mean, you can have AND gate, OR gate, uh, uh, various universal gate like NAND, NOR, XOR and all right but for instance if I have like set of thousand AND gates, thousand NAND gates, thousand XOR gate that is a not a feasible solution I mean see for instance if your design is using only AND gates rest of the thousand XOR gate will go wasted so for that purpose we have something called lookup table in the sense even particular gate 
you can program the way you want you can configure the same gate into xor gate same gate into and gate right so that is the beauty of fpga i hope uh, uh, some idea you got right so here we saw uh, we uh, i told you about the configurable logic gate right configurable logic gate. so what is configurable <laughs> so configurable logic gates are made up of logic cells i was mentioning about it is something like a small memory block where you have inputs and you have outputs so using verilog or vsdl you configure these gates okay this 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 we call it as a lut so for instance uh, if i take and gate okay i have two inputs a b and one output okay so now possible inputs are 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 right now these outputs are actually 0 0 0 1 these are the possible outputs so if i consider xor gate or gate or any gate can i say this possible inputs are same this set of inputs are same right whatever the gate if i consider can i say this inputs are always same yes yes or no yes so only thing which changes is output right so this is the parameter so what i can do for instance i have a memory you assume i have a memory i store this outputs so 0 0 0 1 and i send i mean i ha i have an address line which is of 2 bits so if i send 00 i am going to get 0 as the output if i send 01 i am going to get 0 as output when i send 11 as address i am going to get 1 as output so this memory is acting like a and gate right now so this same memory if i change this into 11 0 11 so this memory is acting like a or gate now right because address whatever the address i send it to this memory according to this memory according to that this memory is acting like a or gate so this we call it as a lookup table so in the fpga we don't have gates we have lookup tables where we configure that particular memory to act like a particular gate so that's why we call it as a configuration i mean we are configuring that memory into particular gate okay this gate shall be connected using a programmable switcher so Uh, such millions of gates we will have so those gates will be connected each other based on the very log code you what you have written and it will create a circuitry okay then why do we use fpga so one thing is flexibility in the sense like uh, asic for instance if i use asic the time to market is high right i mean See, actually, what I have to do, I have to uh, go for the physical design. Uh, I have to write a very long code that is front end codes. Then I have to uh, get the physical design of that. Then I have to go for the production. After production, if I find that any issue is there in that particular IC, then entire cycle I have to repeat, right? And the cost involved also in this particular cycle will be huge. So, yes, it. i go for asic when only when my volume is more in the sense uh, let me consider snapdragon qualcomm snapdragon where millions of qualcomm snapdragon ics will be produced right so even though i go for that iteration my time to market even though it's like late but it is a huge production so but whenever i have a limited application for instance uh, if i want to design a 5g base station where at the max in india we may have like some 500 600 5g base stations right so the limited quantity so in the limited quantity application i go for the fpga rather than asic and 
even like i said that like uh, i'll be going for the physical design and actual production till the production in the acq you will not be able to see the uh, output right you don't know like what are the algorithm you have written even though in the simulation it is producing some output actual hardware actual ic how it is producing the output you are not not knowing so for that usually in companies like vlsi companies they will use the fpga as a prototyping platform and they will test those design because that is a hardware available so that same very low code they will put into this fpga and they will analyze how this uh, uh, fpga uh, i mean how this design behaves okay so the advantage of this fpg is flexibility that's what i mean you can program it in the field and you can see how it behaves right and speed so i mean with respect to asic it may not be you cannot match the speed of asic because in the asic we will be designing for the particular application only right for instance qualcomm snapdragon will be designing for that so the available hardware is for that application only but compared to your microprocessors and microcontrollers even gpus and cpus this is highly faster so nowadays uh, you may see that like in machine learning applications uh, in data science application the amazon microsoft is also hiring these fpg engineers because of that purpose so even uh, now we talk about chat gpt and bing servers right so these actually in the back end they are running these algorithms on the fpga as accelerators okay so not only for the prototype not only for the product development we can also use this fpga alternate to your cpu gpus and controllers okay so the power consumption wise it is comparatively low uh, compared to your cpus and gpus and the customization so here in the asic for instance if you want to customize your application that is not allowed right whereas in the fpga it allows customization i mean you can just change the verilog or vsdl code and you can change the functionality overall functionality and rapid prototyping so as i said if you want to analyze the actual circuit functionality in the asic you have to program into actual i mean you have to generate or build that uh, ic and then you have to find how it behaves but if you have this fpga you can just program into fpga that verilog or vsdl code what you have written that you can program into fpga and analyze how it behaves okay so how to program fpga i mean in the uh, can someone tell me uh, how actually asic is produced so for instance if you want to build simple we'll take a simple example if you want to build a half adder asic so what are all the procedure usually what we do like we will write a very log code then that, that is a front end then we go for the based on the very log code what you have written we will do the physical design of that circuitry then that uh, the gerber will be uh, generated that gerber will be sent to the fabrication once that ic is fabricated then you have to write uh, you have to build the corresponding circuitry with that ic and then you, you have to test that right that may be i mean hardly like that will take one year of uh, uh, time to market but in the fpga whatever the very log code you have written you will compile and generate the bitstream file that bitstream file you will have this fpga board uh, you will be writing that bit file into that board using some jtag and uh, i mean flash programming right so here the time required to look into that output hardly i mean if you write the, the, the same example what i have taken a half adder right so maybe if you have already that fpga platform the development board then within a day you can see the output right so that is the rapid prototyping available with the fpga that's why like many uh, companies small firms they prefer fpga is rather than asic okay when I, when i want to uh, uh, bring a product very fast then i go for the fpga okay
So especially where all this FPGA will be used? One is telecommunication. Like nowadays you hear about uh, uh, 5G uh, internet, right? So I was also part of, uh, I, I work in the wireless industry. Uh, I, I was also part of this uh, 5G development, like indigenous 5G development, as well as like uh, uh, one of the SKT based 5G uh, development team. So all this uh, wireless application and telecommunication application, as I said, I mean, even though in the user side, like Qualcomm Snapdragon and all is a ASIC, but in the base station side, where the specification keep on changing, it's not constant, right? I mean, this when now it is 5G and in like after five, six years, if 6G comes, then we have to adapt to that 6G, right? So in such scenarios, we go for FPGA. I mean, see, actually, if that specification changes in case of ASIC, we cannot uh, change that specification in the IC because uh, we cannot reprogram that, right? In the FPGA, if I change my algorithm, I can just change the very low code and I can fuse it to that. Then in all the military application, I can say, every military application uh, like missiles tanks right uh, it contains at least one fpg because these are all like limited uh, uh, productions right i mean we'll not uh, produce something like 1000 10000 in quantity limited production so even the space application you may hear about a starlink or uh, spacex right so these are all like using not asic so these kind of systems will be using FPGAs only because these are all like R&D products, right? So all R&D application based products will be using FPGAs. Even medical equipments like your X-ray devices, ultrasound devices, everything will not use ASIC. It will be used in FPGAs only. And high-end video processing. Nowadays in Bangalore, you might have seen that like automatic number plate detection and all. So uh, if you use processor for that, you know that like in traffic, uh, maybe, uh, 30 40 vehicles will be moving at a time so if you use conventional processor for that uh, that is not sufficient that everything has to be processed parallelly so in such kind of application we use fpga rather than processors and obviously nowadays in linkedin if you search you see a lot of openings with, for the fpga for especially machine learning and data science all this acceleration right so they cannot go for the ASIC. They have to build it on FPGA only because those algorithms will be keep on modifying. It will be like keep on evolving this algorithm. So in such scenario, we have to use FPGA based solutions. So now we will look into our course plan. What we will be studying in uh, our actual uh, 50 hours course, right? So initially, uh, initial week, we will be studying about introduction to programmable logic device. So when I say FPGA, FPGA itself is not alone the programmable logic device. We have CPLDs, we have EPLDs, we have PLAs, right? Some of the things are absolute now, uh, in the sense no more is used. Uh, it was like legacy designs, but CPLD, EPLD still we are using for our high-end applications. So in one of, uh, one of my wireless com communication application, I'm using CPLD. Uh, I mean, so many people think that like CPLD is absolute, but like now still now still uh, we are using these CPLDs and EPLD for various applications and we will be studying about various FPGA device families. So when I say FPGA, it is not from the single manufacturer. Now you know that like recently uh, AMD acquired this Xilinx and Altera is acquired by Intel. So with this itself, we can understand the potential of uh, FPGA. Why these big companies? These are like giant companies with the processors, right? I mean, nobody is there. Nobody can beat those two companies uh, in terms of processor technology. If they are uh, purchasing uh, entire company like uh, Xilinx and Altera, these two companies, that's because the potential of this FPGA. Uh, most of the acceleration, right? We have to go with the FPGAs only. Then uh, most of our discussion we will do with the Xilinx based FPGAs, that is AMD based FPGAs because the market share of the FPGA, right, Xilinx is more. So most of the companies are using Xilinx based FPGAs. So we will see like how uh, actually we will build our projects using Xilinx based FPGAs. And uh, I was talking about lookup tables. 
not only lookup tables, we have various memories, we have DSP cores, we have uh, flip flops, multiplexers, all these are there in the FPGAs. So we will be discussing how to build a design, how to create a circuit trees using these kind of small, small uh, resource available inside the FPGAs. Okay. Then we will go through detailed flow. I mean, for instance, a customer given one specification, like you have to design one uh, modulator, you have to design one video processing unit, you have to design one machine learning algorithm. So how to derive specification from those things and build your circuitry. So that we will be studying. So IO resources and how to implement, like we have like uh, in the ASIC, we have something like physical design, right? In the same way here in the FPGA, we have implementation, placement, routing, okay and here we also have the vendor specific ips like uh, uh viterbi decoder modulators video processing ips or uh, processors soft core processors so ip how to integrate that ips into our very log or vsdl code that we will be studying then we have some design constraint rules like uh, you have you might if you had studied in the vlsi same thing here also we have to give some rules how that tool has to synthesize that we will be studying next important thing is debugging so whatever uh, so far you might have studied that is on the uh, software you might have simulated so once you program into fpga you need not actually uh, uh, probe that through cro or oscilloscope we have uh, various tools like integrated logic analyzer where you can put that ip and see how your fpga design is running on the fpga okay so you can probe it using some softwares so those debugging techniques we will be studying then nowadays fpga is not coming as a single fpga itself we have soc soc in the sense processor plus fpg we can design embedded systems using fpga now uh, we call it as a zinc soc so that is now actually most uh, uh, what do you say that embedded system design using fpga is most demanding skill set right now in the market so for that purpose we include zinc soc as a, a example and we discuss how to design these kind of uh, systems using zinc soc board okay then last 10 hour will be mostly on the interview pr preparation okay so that is like how to very log based uh, i mean as a fpga engineer i mean being myself uh, uh, hiring various candidates so i uh, teach you how you can actually like prepare and how i usually ex what i expect from the candidates when i hire uh in my company so that kind of example and like we will discuss uh, mostly uh, how what kind of questions you will be facing in the fpg interviews all these things so uh this uh, these are all like bonus lessons i mean uh if we have like enough time then we will be these are all like two advanced i mean linting is like uh, it will be used but this is a simple topic how what kind of coding styles we have to follow in company all these things so we'll be discussing on that and hls is uh, i mean a fairly new topic actually it will be uh, it is something like you need not write very low code nowadays you can write a c program and that you can convert into very low code so that we call it as high level synthesis even though it is not optimal i mean uh, people are claiming it's like now the algorithms has come uh, to uh, come with the optimal solutions so uh, we will be discussing on the hls hls uh, techniques how we can actually design uh, using hls and also this is a 50 hour uh, lesson plan what we will be discussing uh, and we actually we have one uh, evaluation board that is zinc soc board so i mean if you see it in the market i mean uh, if you want to buy right it is like 50 plus k uh, tool so that we have it in the uh, lab so where you will get a VPN access once you subscribe to a course, right? You will get a VPN access where you can remotely access that device and you can check your program. So actually you will get the hands-on experience also. I mean, you uh, or, or you can come to the institute and you can uh, actually see like how it is working and all. So all the experiment, you can perform it on that board itself. Okay. So that is a brief course plan what we have. So now uh, it's, uh, uh, I mean, I'll give you time to ask any questions or doubts clarification required in terms of fpga sessions hello sir good afternoon yeah hello yeah coming to this uh, are you offering uh, only full-time course or a part-time course or both 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 we have uh -huh, okay and uh, one more thing uh, 
of course uh, we know that uh, different institutes are uh, telling different uh, way that is a fpga mm -hmm. way verification some other institutes mm -hmm. are saying rtl design verification and another are saying design verification are those are all different or... See, no no these are all Sorry. different so rtl verification uh, mm -hmm. uh, design verification these are all different course where you will be learning in terms of like very log vsdl focused and system very log focused right but this is fpga ah, system yeah. design so given oh. uh, fpga how to design systems using that fpga so that is a, all of the different skill set right so the very log mm. or vsdl what you learn system very log what mm. you learn that is like mm. uh, mostly tool specific this is not tool specific mm. it is a system specific right so uh, oh. you have i mean for instance uh, you have very log or vsdl code uh, if you want to prototype mm. it on fpga that is all of the new skill actually i mean it's not same as verification or uh, uh, rtl uh, thing so those there yeah. you will mostly focus on the vsdl or very log here if you see the course content itself it is not focusing mm. on very log that is we do have like initially as an introduction mm. uh, we have very log vsdl and you will be learning tcl scripting linux fundamentals all these things you will be learning apart from that main focus will be on as a fpga how to build a system yeah got it this is inside the fpga that is how to program the fpga those all are not program yes. actually designing yeah. skill itself is a different here fpga designing skill right ah uh, yes yes mm. you will have like a okay. lot of timing issues here and one mm. advantage here see uh, i i can say like uh, if you get into asic domain there you will be like uh, focused only on like maybe tool wise right i mean you will be simulating that design you will be uh, uh, writing some uh, scripts and uh, that is mostly like uh, rtl uh, tool sets uh, rtl skill set but in fpga once you get into fpga see actually you can easily switch into your art, uh, asic also because whatever you uh, study in the asic domain you cannot apply it in the fpga fpga skill set is, itself is a different thing in the sense you have to uh, you should know how to uh, place and route and like i mean it's not i mean even the tool takes care of most of the things but you should know how to properly give some uh, drcs xdc uh, constraints and how to uh, resolve the timing and in the asic you will be working on particular domain only right either sta only or uh, you will be working on only synthesis but here in the fpga you will be working till end to end right you, you in the okay. fpga you will not find something like sta engineer you will not find something like physical design engineer so from rtl design to programming level you will be having exposure of everything so from uh, i have seen like many of my colleagues uh, uh, if if they want to switch into asic also right easily they can switch into asic but asic guys cannot get into fpga so here the job opportunity has a like wide spectrum compared to asic domain so here i see as a fpga engineer i can work in the asic domain also fpga domain also but asic engineer cannot work in the fpga domain yes okay thank you yeah uh, sir, uh, deep learning applications uh, mm -hmm. mostly are written in uh, Python language. Uh, so, using HLS, it can be converted to Verilog, sir. See, actually, uh, there are two things. So, uh, HLS is something like uh, it's a C programming thing, right? So, uh, that is that is actually if you want to see when we talk about deep learning application, there are two things. Uh, mainly, that deep learning application they will be using. Uh, what you say, uh, uh, SOC based solution in the sense all your Python co codes, right? That will be run, running on the processor, whichever the acceleration you want to do. For instance, like let me consider CNN, convolution neural network. So in that uh, you want to run those convolution neural network cores in the FPGA. So those things, right? Using HLS in the sense C program can be converted, but I uh, have not explored much on the Python. Python, I think it will not be convertible. So you can run that on the processor side. So in the FPG, when we talk about FPG, right? So it has PS and PL. I mean, SOC FPGs. It has processors and uh, programmable logics. So if you want to use a programmable logic, then you can write a C program and convert into Verilog. But uh, I have not seen actually Python converting into Verilog. HLS, uh, I doubt Python has a support. Thank you, sir. C has support actually. C program has support. So this Python still you can run it on FPGA in a sense processor side. So you can run these Python kernels right uh, on the processor side. 
So uh, see, actually, uh, let me just project in the screen. <coughs> when I say zinc SOC, right? So it will have ARM core and FPGA fabric. And here we will have something like EXI interface. Okay. So in the ARM core, my operating system or your software codes, uh, this can be, we can run. So in the FPGA, usually we put some circuit trace, right? So in the deep learning, when I say, if you want to accelerate your uh, convolution neural network, so you may be running some convolution neural network core here. So using Python, what you can do, you can push the data. I mean, some basic processing, you can do it in the ARM and you can push that data in the, into the FPGA through AXA interface and you can run that CNN algorithm, which you might have written using Verilog or uh, HLS uh, using some C coding that you can push back to ARM again, like some more processing. So what happens, right? So especially in the deep learning applications and all, everything you cannot put into FPGA because some things in the sequential or processor will be like more suitable, right? Some data cleaning, training, that and all you cannot push into FPGA. So it's a combination we have to do actually. FPGA can be used only as an accelerator basically. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, what is IP core, sir? How will be how will it be useful for will it be useful for deep learning or for purely for IP hardware? Core, yeah. See, actually, IP core. For instance, uh, I was talking about uh, convolution neural network. For instance, right? Uh, <coughs> I was talking about CNN, right? So in CNN, now there are two ways. One is actually you will be developing entire uh, Verilog code for this CNN. You'll be uh, designing, verifying, uh, uh, then you'll be putting into your FPGA, right? So that takes, I mean, like maybe months of time, multiple months of time because uh, you have to develop everything from scratch. But when I say about, when I talk about IP core, so some third party companies like uh, Xilinx or in Bangalore, we have companies like iWave, Mistral, uh, power controllers, these guys will be developing this IP core. See this, you, they know that like this CNN will be used by multiple parties, right? So where they'll be giving you as a whole package. So where you will not know what is the internal VHDL code is there. Okay. You will not understand what is there inside that, but you will know only what are the inputs and what are the outputs of this CNN. Okay. So here the time to development is reduced. IP core is something like it's a black box where already developed things are there, you'll be just reusing. For instance, later point of time, you have developed one uh, deep learning application you assume, and you want to share it to some third party. You can sell it to third parties, right? So where they need not again develop everything. So they can just use your black box. So you need not reveal the internal uh, RTL codes also. You can just uh, package it and you can push into FPGA. So then it's something like just instantiation of that IP. So you will not know what is there inside that, what logics are inside that. You'll be just calling that, uh, calling the encrypted file. That is, we call it as an encrypt uh, IP, intellectual property. Uh, it is not Hello? free, sir. Uh, IP huh? cores are not, uh, needs to be purchased, sir. Uh, actually, there are free IP cores also. In the Xilinx, if you see, there are some memory controllers, there are some uh, I2C IPs, SPA IPs, some are free and some are uh, proprietary things will be there, right? Some IEEE, for instance, you have a patented uh, solution. Then you need not, I mean, if it is a third party thing, right? FFT, for instance, you have designed one optimal FFT core, you assume. So uh, those things need not be free, right? I mean, because you have spent some time, so you, you need not, you don't want to uh, uh, share that as a free. So in that cases, it won't be free. But in there are some websites like opencore.org and uh, you'll get a lot of uh, GitHub IP cores that you will get it as a free. But uh, some of the things which are uh, like proprietary, then they will not give you as a free. So you have to purchase the license. Thank you, sir.
हेलो या सर आई वांट टू नो व्हाट इज द इनिशियल सैलरी ऑफ अ पीजीए इंजीनियर एंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ सैलरी योर वॉइस इज ब्रेकिंग इन कैन यू बी बिट लाउडर हेलो या uh sir uh, what is the initial salary of fpg engineer and uh, in terms of salary and on site opportunity which one is better asic or fpga yeah so see actually in, <coughs> not only in uh, fpga in asic or any vlsi industry initially uh, in uh, in electronic basically in core domain initially it will be uh, the nominal salaries only right maybe 4 to 6 lakh in that range depending on company so Uh, that will be initial salary right i mean max you may get like 6 uh, 6 uh, to 9 or 12 also i mean depends on like uh, tier 1 or tier 3 colleges but once you get the experience right uh, like maybe 4 uh, years experience or 5 years experience then usually like your experience into four times like uh, 20 lakhs if you are 5 years experience for, uh, like maybe 3 into 4 3 to 4 like 15 to 20 lakh in that range right so then the growth curve is very much actually and now nowadays not only in india right so i mean uh, you have many opportunity in the european countries as well as in uh, us countries also especially in germany and all uh, this fpg has a lot of uh, demand actually canada germany and all right and you can see nowadays even uh, due to the lack of resources in us and uh, uh european countries uh, like all these us startups right they are starting some branches in uh, india uh, like bangalore and noida uh, for this fpga things so, i mean they are starting fpga uh, development centers in india and noida so that like they'll get some resources here like and this fpga is right so it's kind of like very narrow field i mean very less people are there and that's why i mean once in the uh, once maybe like one, after 2 3 years of experience you can demand with the uh, Uh, uh companies like you want this salary uh, that is the growth aspect of this fpg actually okay sir uh, i want to enter into the rf uh, ic designing field as my background is in the field of telecommunication uh, pardon your voice is breaking nitin your voice is breaking actually hello yeah hey, tell me uh sir actually i want to enter into the rf ic design field as my background RFSC, is okay rfic design as my background mm-hmm. is uh, in telecommunication network optimization network planning and etc mm-hmm. so which one mm-hmm. better sir asic or fpga see in rfic you you meant to say that like uh, rf soc or see in fpga also we have something like rf soc in the sense uh, if you see that like uh, all our uh, 5g solution right it it is built on rf soc based uh, fpgas so you mean to say that you want to design a6 for the rf soc or fpga based rfics uh, what what do you mean to say sir fpga based fpga based rf soc is uh, this, i mean that is a good option actually i mean see since your background is telecommunication right what i recommend is like fpga would be like uh, uh, ideal because see my background is also is like uh, wireless communication where like i work for the defense applications and this telecommunication application uh, wireless cdma all these things right so all this wireless communication uh, systems especially systems right i mean see even though qualcomm and uh, uh, some communication companies broadcom they'll be developing some ics with the nxp also they'll be de- developing ics with the uh, I- asics with the uh, rf solutions but actually right for the prototyping the systems engineer the wireless systems engineer they'll be prototyping it on a fpga itself so initially if you want to test your algorithms right so we have to first prove that on the fpga then only the asic front end engineers or uh, maybe physical design engineer will take forward from that uh, stage actually but initially the algorithmic design or system design will happen in the fpga design stage itself all right sir thanks so much sir because actually asic skill set is right so i mean that skill set is mostly on the uh, tool based the thing i mean if you want to write a very log code or uh, you want to uh, uh, put into uh, i mean physical design thing or then uh, uh, manufacturing that is like mostly tool based skill set 
but especially fpga engineers right they'll build their skill set with respect to specific domain for instance if you uh, stick on to wireless so you'll be, be you'll be a fpga designer with a wireless application so some uh, fpga engineers are there they'll be specialized in the video processing application so here application to application those guys will be specialized so uh, those who are like fpg engineers in uh, uh, cisco juniper or uh, uh, I, uh, like various uh, uh, networking companies right those guys will be mostly uh, specialized in the network application they will be like uh, specialized in how to develop the switches how to develop ethernet uh, uh, protocols how to develop oran I, uh, ips so they'll be expertized in that uh, field actually so uh, FPG engineers, right, eventually they'll build skill set with respect to specific application. But ASIC, right, it's kind of common application. I mean, like, uh, since it's like kind of uh, Verilog or VSDL, so you need not have a, a specific domain application. But here you can build the domain skill also. That is a one good thing here. Okay, sir. And uh, what is the uh, role of FPG in the uh, um, medical application, sir? Acceleration. I mean, all your application, right? All your uh, algorithms will be running on the FPG itself. For instance, like in the video processing. So uh, when I say video processing, you have to do a lot of analytics. We have to do a lot of processing. Uh, when I talk about signal processing, uh, you know, uh, there is like a lot of uh, uh, correlation, filtering. Uh, there will be a lot of, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, signal processing application, signal processing things, right? Everything will be happening in the FPG itself because processors cannot handle, right? I mean, now we call, uh, now let me consider, since you are a wireless background guy only. So, I, I mean, you might have heard about MIMO application where we will have 128 cross 128 MIMO, uh, 14 cross 14 MIMO, right? So, this such parallel uh, paths you have to process. If it is a processor, you everything will be like kind of a sequential uh, processing that will be not feasible right so then all your things have to be parallelly processed so then parallel processing can be done only using fpga so uh, all my uh, circuitry i mean algorithms i'll be mapping into fpga itself oh, thank you so much sir yeah no why not we are going with microcontroller rather than fpga because all the small and uh, i think till medium level we can easily finish our work with microcontroller only no need to go for ASIC because like ASIC we have disadvantage that is need to uh, not reprogram it. But microcontroller but, yeah. like directly from from where we can manage them. In the microcontroller? Yes sir. Yeah, see, actually, in microcontroller, everything is sequential, right? So, uh, the pro see, actually, uh, maybe uh, I can uh, show you one example. <laughs> So now you assume MIMO application, you have a parallel uh, phi antenna. Maybe we will consider three itself. So now uh, you have ADC. This ADC data you have to pass into FFT. Okay, fast forward transform. So in the microprocessor, if you want to implement this FFT itself, like 1024 FFT. So in terms of clock cycle, how much it takes? Actually, everything has to be sequential, right? Minimum maybe 1024 clock cycles, right? One clock cycle, if I consider one mega, that is one micro, it takes minimum 1024 microsecond to process but whereas this fft right i'll implement a digital circuitry using fpg you assume i'll write a digital circuitry so instead of 1024 maybe like i made like 215 clock cycle and that to see when i say three different parallel channels then 1024 into three that is 1024 into three microsecond almost like three millisecond overall right 3 millisecond but here maybe within one microsecond i can manage so for high speed application you cannot go for the microcontroller microcontroller hardly how much it can support maybe some uh, 100 megahertz or 150 megahertz right but in uh, if you see the fmax of fpga it can support up to 800 megahertz like uh, aria 10 or uh, scratix or agilex it can go up to 1 giga also 
for high end application we cannot uh, go for the microcontroller hello sir good afternoon yes tell me sir in previous uh, our courses uh, like uh, soc verification design verification courses uh, mm -hmm. you have talked about like um, test plan writing test case writing and all for debug cycle mm -hmm. can we expect the same in this fpga course also for debug cycle uh, especially debugging right yes uh, deb debugging using uh, fpga yes yes uh, we have that uh, uh, topics in our course actually i mean how to debug using so we have a eval board in my, in our uh, institute right so we will show yeah. you like how to uh, write those uh, uh, like test benches hardware test benches and how to debug using the hardware all these things we will have that uh, any industry level uh, module will be uh, implemented sir Yes, actually, uh, uh, here we will be uh, talking about this Ethernet application. So we will uh, we'll be developing small switch kind of application, and we will be testing that. Oh, okay. So Ethernet uh, skill set is like mostly nowadays. Ethernet skill set is uh, uh, asked by most of the companies because now uh, FPGA based most of the FPGA based systems will be having Ethernet. Like uh, we, it may be like uh, 5G application or uh, networking application like Zenipper or Cisco guys are using. or even yes, the defense applications uh, like how our gps transceivers and all right so everywhere like yes. we have uh, this uh, ethernet required so that's yeah. where like we discuss on the ethernet model and uh, actually like in the initial stages i i do discuss on the ddr also ddr also is now one of the skill set which is like widely used in many companies ah uh, yes sir Uh, can we expect like a test plan writing, test case writing, something like that, sir? Is it there for uh, FPGA cycle also? Test benches we have to write definitely, yes. Okay. Uh, no, sir. I think uh, uh, I'm not uh, able to communicate correctly. Uh, what mm -hmm. I what I mean to ask is, uh, test plan writing, test case writing will be there, no? Like test bench writing will be there, no, sir? Uh, yes, yes. Just means writing for like, that. Uh, uh, in industry general practices, first you have to write the test plan. Then we will go for the uh, uh, test writing the test like something like that. No. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Is, is that part is going to be covered in our course uh, anywhere? Ah, uh, actually, I mean, generally, how I thought is like in the other batches, previous batches, and all. so uh, i didn't uh, uh, go through that way i mean i didn't try the test plan and uh, uh, in that way we didn't try but maybe like in that way also i can because like mostly uh, uh, when i discuss right i just uh, discuss in terms of like application and like how to write the test benches and all maybe we can follow that uh, we can uh, take that point also i mean that's a good point maybe in that way also i can uh, show you like how we do it in industry Uh, initially we will write the test plan atp and all we write right initially test plan acceptance test plan and also in that way we can plan yes sir yes sir. okay thank you thank you very much yeah uh hi sir himabindu here yeah tell me uh sir uh, you teach a very long language also uh, while uh, uh, teaching this fpga uh, because yes, i, I think, do uh, yeah yeah actually this is uh, uh, i i will be taking only fpg related thing but i think okay. uh, initially as i said as a course right uh, we have initially very log linux fundamental and some verification aspect also that will be taught in the in the same course right yes 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 okay after you give the introduction of all these uh, then you will start the uh, fpg related actually, FPG. Stuff. so yeah that will be taken by shinimas so initial courses will be taken by shrinivas so once that okay. is completed then only we will be jumping into this fpg oh okay okay because uh, many people uh, will not be having the background on uh, uh, very very yeah. low bar vsdl right so uh, uh, yes. that is like uh, that is required for us for any discussion that is required yes. that's a prerequisite so that will be covered initially okay because i don't have any uh, background uh, on that sir okay 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 so uh, is it is it fine right sir yes. 
yes yes that will be that is no issues like that very log or vsdl background will be covered initially then only we will be okay. starting discussing on the fpg okay okay so actually i i have experience on uh, uh, pre and post silicon validation sir using uh, okay, fpg no. models okay. but uh, i don't have experience on this uh, Uh, how we uh, yeah design and uh, develop the models yeah okay 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 so, so actually, it, uh, yeah. it, it, it will be useful for uh, even for uh, this kind of background also right sir yes yes definitely and see actually you can uh, with the uh, validation experience you can plan uh, switching into some uh, prototyping uh, kind of emulation kind of uh, oh, uh, yes sir job roles and all right yeah yeah uh, because uh, uh, I, I, see, I see there are more chances uh, for this kind of uh, uh, a, a fpga related uh, or uh, verification side i am seeing more uh, more uh, uh, opportunities sir I'm yes, not yes. finding. Uh, I I I see less opportunities on uh, pre and post silicon validation. So I just thought Nowadays, of. Nowadays, actually, uh, uh, if you see uh, in Bangalore, right, there are many companies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, since like uh, once this acceleration, uh, uh, they found uh, application in acceleration for the FPGA. So now many companies are hiring uh, for the FPGA. Even like uh, now, now we are talking about that uh, uh, investment on the. Uh, semiconductor industry, right? So many uh, design yeah. companies are starting in Bangalore. So for their initial design prototyping, so far what was happening? Most of the initial prototyping was happening in either Europe or US. Now in Bangalore okay. also they started this uh, uh, initial uh, prototyping. Uh, like you okay. can see uh, many companies. Like uh, I was recently uh, 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 talking to one of the founder. Like uh, there is Leapfrog and there is companies like. Uh, uh, risk fi related companies i saw and like now edge queue hardware io so these are all guys who are developing entire ic itself from in the india itself like from the beginning okay so these companies usually has a lot of opportunity for the fpga skill set okay and uh, you will give some uh, hands on session also right sir i, I mean practical uh, uh, sessions yes, yes. towards yes 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 so for each and okay. every topic i discuss So corresponding okay. demo I'll be showing and I'll be sharing the source codes as well. Source codes and uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, write and we, we can, can write, validate yes. it. Uh, yes. Okay. You can uh, that uh, see actually like for the basic application this uh, uh, Vivado toolset is available as a free. I mean you can uh, install the webpack and you can try it. So okay. <laughs> so that I mean that's like kind of like you need not you need not have a license. Apart from okay. that, see that is a heavy software actually. Like it requires some 20 GB of memory and all, right? So you can, uh, if you don't want to install in your local PC, you can always use our uh, institute uh, server where we have these tools installed. You can use it in that. Also, this okay. hardware board also connected. So if you want to test it on actual FPGA itself by programming, so uh, okay. we have Z board in the institute. So you can fuse okay. that bit file into that Z board and you can test how it behaves. Okay. Okay. Sir, uh, uh, where is the institute, sir? Can we visit uh, uh, offline? Uh, yes, is it fine in, or? Yeah, it's in Huli Mao, right? Uh, you can talk to, uh, you can coordinate with the admin. They will guide you how to reach oh. the institute. You can, you can uh, attend there and see these boards and all. You can test it uh, offline also. You can access offline and come to institute and access offline. Yeah, uh, because uh, I, I mean, uh, um, online we can, uh, uh, we can. I use that uh, virtually but uh, uh, how the uh, physical boards and all will be there hardware how the hardware looks like i just yeah, want see, to yeah. take a look sure, so you visit the institute you can coordinate with the uh, okay. admin manohar or shrinivas okay. they will guide you how to reach to the institute okay sir okay uh, hello uh, hello sir yeah. uh, at, at the uh, end of the course uh, on 10 days Uh, if we want to work in the kit on last 10 days can we come to the institute and uh, um, by doing the course online for 10 days alone mm -hmm. at the end we can come and work in the kit sir yeah yeah sure sure you can do that no problem uh, thank you sir
Hello. Yeah. So, what is the duration of the course? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. I go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. If we get any uh, doubts or so while doing, uh, uh, so can we reach out uh, to you, sir? Or uh, yes, do yes, we need sir. to note down all the uh, questions and? Uh, no, not necessary till the uh, uh, end of the session. So usually, what a student does, I mean. Uh, they will uh, put it on the we'll, you will be have, uh, given one uh, whatsapp group access so whenever you have a okay. uh, doubt you can post it in the group so if it is okay. like too much to explain usually i will tell that i will explain in the upcoming class or if okay. it is like small small doubts on like some tool related issue where i want to uh, want i mean i want to unblock you guys i will just uh, uh, guide you like how to unblock in that point okay sir okay thank you sir Yes. Hello. Yes. So, what is the Hello. duration of the course? It's a fifty hours course, actually. So, is it for Hello, the freshers or only for the uh, those who are already in this industry, sir? No, it's it's for the freshers also. I mean, see, as as I said, so prerequisite also will be covered here, right? See, actually, to get into this FPG industry, you need to have a prerequisite of digital design and Verilog. So those two things also will be covered. I mean, keeping in the mind that even freshers also has to get into this industry. So if I am choosing this in online mode, then uh, how I'll be help means uh, guided for the placements or the companies, sir. Same like how uh, uh, our actual uh, offline students will get the uh, access right for the placement. In the same way, you will get. I think on that placement support and all, uh, you once you talk to Vaibhav and Manohar, uh, like uh, who attend, uh, arranged this session, right? So you can talk to them because they'll be coordinating on the placement and all. Uh, mainly, I'll be coordinating on the technical end. So maybe on that end, right? On the placement assistance, you can talk to them once. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, for sir, the lab, Sir, how it is going to be for uh, weekend batches, sir? Like uh, how many hours or weekends it can be? Weekends it will be uh, three three hours, Sunday Saturday. Okay, sir. In such a way, how many weeks can is the plan for? Ah, uh, three three hours. It will be almost like it takes three months actually, three three to four months. Okay, sir. Okay. Because in between, uh, sometimes I'll be traveling, so in the weekends and also uh, one or two sessions I may miss. So it will extend up to four months and all actually, four, four, four and a half months. What about yeah, the timing, yeah. sir? So, but timings usually uh, will be flexible with the students' timing actually. Uh, so in the weekends and all, the students also will be having plans and all, right? So usually we'll decide how at what time we'll take because my timings and uh, uh, students timing it has to match right so we usually discuss with the students and according to my timings we'll fix the session timings actually usually i take morning time uh, i'll start from uh, uh, 10 30 go up to uh, 1 30 that's what usual timing i prefer so what is the days and timing for the week batches a uh, week purchase uh, you check with the admin once uh, uh, i'm not sure like how they have planned uh, uh, just you can check with ones uh, with them so in week batches how how it works is actually uh, initially right uh, that very log also very log courses and all has to be coordinated right so you just check with them once how they plan so usually it will be coming from the admins weekday plans because you will have some other batches also right i mean initial introductions and all so just check with the admin on the timing and logistic things. Okay, sir. So each day the classes will be three hours or of how many uh, hours? No, uh, weekdays batches, uh, uh, I'm not much aware. So just check with them once how they have planned. So usually they plan uh, because uh, a full time batch, uh, it, it is like slightly different plans will be there. Uh, sir, actually one okay, sir. Here. Sir, in the course, like what we are actually going to do, so, like uh, the, our code, uh, we will run the code and uh, reward or any other uh, tool and uh, generate the bit stream and load on the FPGA and get the output. Or uh, it will be beyond that and uh, something else, like uh, what I did uh, in my project 
example like communicate uh, uh, like one home automation system i did on basis 3 so that was just like a basic only not that much complex so yeah See, actually uh, many people uh, when we when we talk about fpg many people will think that like it's like right just writing a very log code and uh, dumping into fpj board and getting the output right so it's not the case actually like when we talk about that may be true in the very small designs but when we talk about the complex design like communication systems and things like that lot of things are there like you have to be carefully design even the writing a very log code it's not, not straightforward so you have to think of like how to optimize that design see uh, when i talk about see my designs and all uh, which is like a 2 million LUT devices, 3 million LUT devices. So we have to plan the placements, we have to plan the timing, we have to plan the synthesis, we have to plan the implementation, uh, we have to uh, plan properly the IO resources, we have to plan uh, various, uh, I mean, whatever the design you do. Like for instance, let, let me just simply uh, take one example. So if I, uh, simple shift register, for instance, 256 bit shift register, so if you write a simple Verilog code, there are various way how it will be inferred in the FPGA. So for the 256-bit flip-flop, you may have to go for 256-bit flip-flops. So that is something like uh, it takes almost, I think, one each CL base will be having eight flops, right? So almost, uh, uh, I think, more than 20, 25 CL base it has to consume. So it's a huge resource. You assume you such... Uh, some 20 30 shift registers are there your entire fpga resource will be gone there so there are some techniques where you can map into single clb itself using some techniques like slice m and all so those techniques will be mostly discussing so whenever you go to any company for an interview right they'll not check your very log skill they'll not uh, check just how you, whether you know how to program it using very log or vivado uh, uh, so they will check on whether you have a skill set of solving the timing given a problem have you have a skill set of uh, solving the timing do you have a skill set of optimizing the design do you understand what is there internal to the fpga internal architecture of fpga so that kind of skill set basically makes a difference actually because many people can just uh, write a very low code and just generate the bitstream and program into FPGA. That uh, that doesn't uh, uh, count for a job actually, FPGA domain jobs. Hello. Huh. Sir, what are the prerequisites to learn this program, this course? Sir? Ah. Yeah, see actually uh, prerequisite is digital design and very low. That too actually we will be taking in the class. Uh, that too we will be covering that anyway so uh, right now uh, if you just uh, even like uh, electrical or electronics background or even a computer science background right so uh, can enter into this course so prerequisites like digital electronics and uh, uh, very long that will be covered anyway okay sir. before starting into this uh, fpga core fpga yes sir Hello, uh, sir. Uh, huh. sir. When the batch is going to start, sir? Uh, just check with the admin on that end. Logistic and timing wise and batch starting date and all. You can just check because they'll be planning the courses. So <coughs> you can talk to the institute. OK, sir. And sir, the, the front end functional verification course is different from this number? Yes, sir, that is entirely different, actually. OK, OK. Sir, you come uh, usually offline uh, uh, to institute and teach or uh, how, sir? So mostly I take online sessions. Uh, offline, oh. there are other faculties who will be supporting you. Okay. So main topics oh. I will cover through online. But uh, okay. offline, there are uh, some more faculties on uh, in terms of lab, uh, in terms of doubt clearing. Uh, on the offline okay. sessions, you they'll be helping you, uh, other faculties in the institute. Institute. Okay, sir. Okay. Huh? Sir, how we should take this session so like uh, online or offline, sir? Means we have to go to the Bangalore or, or else through online we can learn this course. Sir. Uh, 
online you can learn online you can learn because my sessions i'll be conducting online only yes sir and board access also will be available remotely available okay so you can check how it is working everything using some scopes that is also connected remotely so uh, so most of the things remotely can be handled here okay sir yeah sir what is the plan for offline sir offline sessions uh check with the admin uh, from my end i am not i have not yet planned i have to get uh, information from the admin so offline uh, on the session plans and all you can just check with them okay manohar or paipo yes sir 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 for the other one um i'm student uh, who is studying in btech fourth year sir now i'm mm -hmm. from vijayanagar so okay. um, actually um, i want to go for rf uh, side sir rf domain rf signal processing domain how this mm -hmm. fpga will be useful uh, for me to take that uh, to take uh, my rf career yeah signal processing domain uh, mostly see actually there are two things uh, when uh, and then we you, you do you want to get into uh, this uh, front end design of the rf like uh, uh, what you say that antenna design or like are you, are you interested in like rf circuitry design or actual signal processing design so here actually i mean in my case right uh, i am as i said i am a wireless design engineer uh, who is i mean like mostly algorithm signal processing algorithms i implement but apart from that there are antenna engineers who will be designing the antennas uh, there are uh, rf front end engineers who will be designing this mixers uh, rf pcbs and all so where you want to fit whether uh, in the actual signal processing domain or like uh, the antenna design domain actually so sir so the signal processing domain sir. signal processing domain means actually fpga uh, it's a best option actually so see what i recommend right so you have to get into uh, companies like uh, startups i mean see there are various startups like mistral solution who will be mostly working on radar uh, park controllers alpha design uh, accord systems uh, uh, so these guys right even corel so these guys will be like working on the signal processing and especially defense application right so to start with i recommend you to get into those companies uh, with this fpga skill set so even leica wireless also so uh, where you can understand uh, the fundamentals uh, how they are using this signal processing and you will learn the techniques with the fpga right so then uh, easily you can get into like uh, mncs also like samsung qualcomm where they will be also using fpga for their signal processing application systems actually signal processing systems yes sir this is the best option actually for the fpg you can uh, implement uh, various algorithms on the fpg and deploy it. sir you support for uh, getting the job also sir a placement in any company institute, institute supports yes institute supports institute supports okay yes sir yes sir sir how is your institute different from other institutes sir in bangalore see actually uh, no other institute uh, sub, uh, has this fpga uh, system design course you can see that like uh, uh, there are some institute they claim uh, fpga design but uh, there are like no trainers with the fpga experience uh, myself i am like 11 almost 11 plus six experience in the fpga itself i started with the uh, fpga design with the defense industry now i am in the telecommunication industry uh, and this is a niche area. I mean, there are no trainers also, much trainers on the FPG. You will get like, you can search, you will get a lot of institute with the verification, RTL, front end and all. Uh, you will rarely get FPG actually. I mean, I, I think one or two institutes are there, that might be there, but uh, the trainers are like not experienced. Yes, sir, got it. Any other questions? Okay, if any other doubts, uh, you can always, uh, you can, uh, through Institute, you can connect to me. You can ask ask them my number, they'll uh, connect you to me. Okay, or else any logistical uh, doubts also you can ask. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
for schedule hello sir hello sir yes yes tell me hello sir yeah, yeah. Me, you also take the you also take the classes for uh, system very log and uvm yeah uh, that is different course i guess i mean it's not my scope uh, you can check with the uh, vibhav uh, there are uh, courses i mean along with the fpg if you want to get into those courses also that will be kind of add ons i guess you can check with the vibhav on that vibhav or manav okay sir okay sir you are good name sir थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर